right. Hello. Uh, if you're here right now, uh, we're still a little early, but this is the test run. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start doodling. Hopefully you can hear a little bit of the music. I'll turn it up a little bit. And um, we're going to doodle until uh, people come in uh, when the class officially starts. Um, and then, then we'll, you know, make some art together. So.
Upside down for all of you. Get rearranged. (laughs) Hey, Nick. is taking advantage of the chat feature. Nick, what should I draw next? Ooh, city landscape. That's a good one. You know what? I'm thinking about New York. So I'm going to look up a picture of New York and I'm going to do a blind contour of New York. I am obsessed with these blind contours lately. New York City skyline. So it looks like we got some good ones here. Oops. Ooh, the nighttime one is pretty with the with the I think that's the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh that's that's a painting. It's very pretty though. I do not want to copy somebody else's artwork. I would like a photograph though. Photos are also artwork, but feel more comfortable modifying that kind of art piece. Okay, so I'm gonna take Nick's suggestion here. Oh, hey, Grace is there. Um, I'm gonna take Nick's suggestion and do a New York City skyline. Um, for a blind contour, you can see this is what I'm working off of. And um, you can do this for the next five minutes before you know class actually starts. Okay, so blind contour. I'm not looking at my page. I'm just looking at the at the screen here. Thank you. 
Wow, buildings are hard for blind contour. A lot of overlapping parts. Interesting. Like I just hit the edge of it, so I'm just gonna not do this whole thing. Oh my gosh, I just realized that this has got the, I don't know why it took me so long to realize that this is a picture of the Twin Towers. Sometimes that's what happens when you're drawing, you realize your eye was drawn to something. I don't know why. Maybe I was thinking about the Twin Towers. I don't know. This is the last big moment in American history when things felt this strange. Okay. All right. That's my that's my New York City skyline. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Grace is asking if I do these every day. I've just started doing these. I'm not doing them every day, but I think I'm going to try to do them Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and the reason I'm doing YouTube is that it doesn't have a limit on the number of people that can watch, and it automatically turns it into a video. So um, that helps. Um, <laughs> Nick is wondering why there's only... Why well, there's only two people chatting when there's uh, when there's so many people watching. Um, you know, who knows who the people are that are watching? That's one of the things that's uh, beautiful and strange about the internet. <laughs> you never know who's watching. Okay. While we're hanging out, I think I'm gonna switch back to an old an old piece and do a little bit more on it. Mm -hmm. While we're just hanging out. This is from uh, my attempted live lesson earlier this week. I've been thinking a lot about that lesson because it was uh, it was a pretty fun epic fail um, in, in my own uh, opinion. It was uh, a swing and a miss. If any of you were here for this for that, I was really thankful to everybody who tried to join. See, <laughs> Borkan, thank you for joining us with your noodle discussion. Nice to see you on chat with us. And that reminds me of Naruto, That's my favorite anime. Maybe I can work a bowl of noodles into one of my drawings later today. Maybe an abstract uh, bowl of noodles of some sort. So if you are just joining right now, um, my online classes, Nick knows this, my online classes start with some meditative doodling so I am experimenting with, an, with a doodle that I started a few days ago. You can doodle with anything you like. This particular doodle is just made out of, just made out of circles and squares and triangles. I didn't have a plan when I started. I still don't have a plan. Um, if, you are, if you are joining us, um, then... Uh, Work on keep the chat for academic purposes, please. Um, and if you're just joining us, please go grab a piece of paper, grab a drawing tool. Um, I'm hoping that I get to see your beautiful artwork on Padlet later. You can also share your artwork by emailing it to me. And once we're done with the live show, I'll also put some links in the description 
for how you can share your artwork. But again, if you're just joining right now, pull out your doodle supplies and just start doodling. This is a doodle that I started a few days ago that was inspired by Janelle. And uh, Janelle had made this piece that had just a lot of, um, a lot of color and a lot of geometric shapes. Dorsalyn, I'm glad you like your brother so much. You two think alike. All right, I'm gonna grab some, some crayons. I wanna do some, some coloring on this piece that was inspired by Janelle. Again, if you are, if you are just joining, you can keep working on anything that you've already started or you can start a doodle. There's not, um, this is just a warm up. Kind of get your, your hands moving with any art supplies that you like. In fact, I think uh, now that I've got um, some, some doodle experiment going from uh, Janelle, I think I'm gonna add some chaos. Cause you know what? I feel like there's a lot of that in the world right now. And it feels like that gives a good record of what what life is right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add some chaos with some big scribbles. Now do I have a plan? No, I don't have a plan. Sometimes just accepting a little chaos, accepting a loss of control can help you get started. Okay. Bora and uh, and Dorsalyn, please stop monopolizing the chat. But if you'd like to use the chat in the way that it is intended, coming up, we are going to, I'm gonna take suggestions for what to draw. And specifically, I'm looking for suggestions for what to add to chaos drawings. And I'm thinking a lot about wild animals. I'm thinking a lot about um, the idea of being on the edge of reality and dreaming. So somebody else is on that wavelength with me. Your drawing, your idea might get added into Ms. Romney's drawing. If you want to use the pat, the chat to, to type in what you're making right now. I'd love to hear what you're making. Or if you have suggestions for me, I'd love to take suggestions on what to do next as my doodle evolves. Gets color. Okay, so those of you that are okay, so I'm uh, silencing some of the people on chat. So Borakan, um, you are now on silent. Okay. Um, for those of you that are not uh, using the, the chat correctly, um, that is what happens. I do turn off your chat. So if you're worried about what is correct or not, spamming would be a way to get turned off the chat. 
But if you if it's art related, it's good. So if you want to tell me something that you're working on, I'd love to see that in the chat. If you want to share an idea for something for me to add, Sophia Judy says a night sky. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna start adding some night sky elements. Okay, maybe bigger. I learned how to do uh, fractals the other day um, when I was researching uh, the life on Mars prompt. And it was super cool. And you just add triangles on each side. We can keep going. It ends up looking like a like a really twisted sort of snowflake. Oh, Nick, I'm so excited that you're hydro dipping the Hot Wheels tomorrow. That's amazing. Okay. So for those of you that are just joining, um, we're going to be doodling for another five minutes or so. I'm going to move on from coloring to like a legitimate doodle. Um, and Sophia gave me the suggestion for a night sky. And uh, Nick had actually just given me the suggestion uh, to do a contour of the New York City skyline. So maybe I'll do, um, maybe I'll do the Oakland skyline. I'm gonna use a reference, a color, a reference. I like to, when I'm doing a blind contour, I like to be looking at something so I can look it up on the iPad. Um, and I'm gonna do Oakland skyline. And I do love the skyline by Lake Merritt. Ooh, that's the part with the with the boats. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. Okay, so I'm gonna do a blind contour. So I'm gonna grab my pen here and um, and we're gonna grab let's see. I'm not gonna look at my page. I'm just gonna look at the photo on my iPad. And again, the photo here is a daytime photo, but I, I can incorporate Sophia's idea of a night sky. So I'm gonna start over in the corner. Oh wow, this picture was taken a long time ago because I live by the lake and you can't see a lot of the same stuff anymore. Like you can't see the Oakland Tribune building anymore which is what I'm drawing right now. Now, when Nick suggested that I do a city skyline earlier and I chose New York, I realized it's really hard to draw a city skyline because it's got so many straight edges to it. It was actually really difficult. So it's a really fun challenge. Now with blind contour, it helps to not lift your pen off the page. And Alison Kunath is a, an artist that I'm really thinking about a lot. And she, she does this, she says that it is a release of control and that you draw something that is not real looking, but real feeling. Maybe you can see something real, if it, even if it's, uh, you know, it doesn't, Oop, accidentally lifted my pen, oh, find my spot again. Okay, and there's all these cool trees down here. Feel like I'm getting to the edge of my journal. Let's see. Okay. 
Yep. Okay. There's the end of my journal. Okay. So I, I'm pretty stoked about that. There's some really interesting stuff happening there. Um, so I'm going to take that and now I'm going to experiment with a night sky. And uh, if anybody has any suggestions for what might go into this night sky, um, I think I'd like it to have some fanciful feelings to it. So, um, you know, this feels pretty realistic so far. Uh, give me a feeling of, um, I think it's time for an animal to add to this. So I need an animal from uh, maybe some kind of uh, bird. Somebody give me a bird. Um, preferably a very wild one that I could look up. What kind of bird should I draw? And I'm thinking I'm gonna do a big one. An owl, ooh, yes, that's gonna help with the night, the nighttime feeling. See, this is why I need you all to be in the same room with me. At least the chat gives us sort of the same room. Okay, so an owl. So I'm, I just used my tool here to look up a picture of an owl. And I'm gonna do another blind contour, but this time I wanna go big. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna see how much space I can take up with this owl to add a feeling of uh, strangeness that happens in dreams where sometimes like uh, things feel too big or, um, or uh, unusual. Oh, ostrich is a good one. Goodness gracious. Okay, so. Sophia said nighttime, so I'm gonna do owl on this one, but ostrich needs to happen too, so thank you. Thank you, Biggie. Um, all right, so I think the most wild looking owl are these. Ooh, that one looks mad. I like that one. I think angry owl with its like little horn feathers tilted back. So I'm gonna do an angry owl. And again, I'm not gonna look down, I'm just gonna look up here and I want to go big. So I'm gonna get my arm used to the page and I'm gonna start with the eyes. And again, I'm not, I don't know what's happening here. I'm just, my eyes are glued to the picture. So I'm gonna follow along the eye first and then the center of the eye. I'm gonna travel inward to this beak. Now what I like about contour drawing is that you can follow any shape. So you can follow you know, the shapes of the feathers, you can follow the shapes of the shadows that go around the eye. You can follow the shape of the eye itself. The slower you go, the more accurate it is, but there's something that I'm thinking about where I'm really not as concerned about accuracy. I really want it to be the vibe, and my vibe is kind of fast today, kind of high key. Maybe it's the music. I don't know if you guys can hear the music. My music just turned off. Inconvenient timing. I've got myself stuck in a corner here. Get back over to the foot of this claw. Okay. Ooh, there's something scary about that. I dig it, I dig it. Oh, I see penguin, yes. Okay, so, oh, and toucan, definitely. Uh, toucan from, uh, I'm assuming that that is Dora Salen, uh, who loves her toucans. Okay, so we got some other good ideas for birds um, to, to liven this up for the next few. Um, I'm gonna pause on my meditative doodle um, which is good because our music stopped anyway. And uh, I'm gonna take a few minutes to do a sketchbook flip. So for those of you that have been 
uh, keeping up with the 3030 challenge uh, for Hillcrest. Uh, every day I've been, every day, uh, every like school day, I've been posting a, um, a sketchbook challenge, uh, something that you can do to kind of just get your pen moving and thinking about different kinds of doodles that you could do. I am actually almost done with the sketchbook that I started the first day that we were out of school. So uh, this sketchbook is, um, you know, it's got writing in it. Um, a lot of this is the, uh, you know, what I've been using um, for the sketchbook prompts. Um, but you can see my favorite tea time snack in quarantine. Um, I have some different sort of sketches that I was thinking about. How, yeah. My phone is a soul sucker. Uh, but you can see that when you have all of your sketches in the same place, that there's something really powerful about it. It uh, gives you a slice of life that can't be, um, that you wouldn't get just by looking at what's written in a journal. It gives you a really strong feeling of what uh, what life right now is like um, and what uh, <laughs> I see there's a lot of a lot of interest in toucans okay I will look up a toucan we'll definitely do a toucan later today um, but you can see that in a sketchbook flip that it gives you a sense of uh, it really records your experiences um, here's a, a scene of Lake Merritt um, you know, some, uh, some painterly interactions with, a, a listening to a song. So what I would really encourage you to do is, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing to be a uh, shelter in place for a while longer. If you haven't started a journal that is keeping all of your art pieces in the same place, then, um, then I would really encourage you to start that now. Okay, and you can see that I've included some other stuff too. Like I was out one day uh, shopping and I wanted to do a drawing of uh, people standing in line, but I didn't have anything but an envelope. So I, I tucked that in here, um, my envelope drawing. Um, you know, some experiments with my boys. But the point of a sketchbook flip, and I encourage you to do a sketchbook flip at some point and, and to even record it and post it. I'd love to see that on Padlet. Um, is for you to see uh, growth and for you to see uh, what what this is, looks like in its um, in its entirety. So there's a feeling of of what it's like to be shelter in place when you pile it all together instead of having you know a drawing here a drawing there. Um, it's really really different when you actually are able to flip through and see how much art you've been making, the kinds of things that you're thinking about. Um, and it's actually one of the thing that's, things that's really good about a sketchbook flip is you start to see things that you like to do over and over again. So right now, what this is really making me think about is it's actually uh, giving me ideas for a, a bigger series, for a, um, you know an art piece that maybe could take up more time um, and so really it starts to get us into the studio habit of mind, understand our world. Because what I'm, what I'm doing is when I see trends in my own work, I'm like, oh, I wonder what other artists are working on that. So the blind contour interest led me to Alison Kunath, um, who is an artist that I really admire. And, uh, and so I'm really interested in what she says in her video is that she likes playing contour because it's a release of control. And, um, and Doris Lynn, yes, I see the Amazon Toucan. I will definitely do the, the Amazon Toucan. Uh, maybe more than one uh, different kind, okay? Um, so when you do a flip like this, you can see trends in what you're interested in. And Alison Kunath is, is interested in the release of control um, and I was thinking about like, right now, it feels really important to accept that I can't control everything. Um, that feels like a big theme in shelter in place. And so 
what I'm going to do with you all today is an experiment. Um, the experiment is to release control. And we've already started to do some of it where you all are telling me what to draw. And this is going to be an art series that I actually submit to a museum. There's a, a museum submission um, that is happening on June 1st. And so I am going to uh, give you all control over what I decide to, over what I'm making. And I'm not going to look at it as I'm making it. And then I'm going to submit that to a museum. So you all get to be part of this art making journey with me um, where I release control. And then a part of understanding art world and connecting to art world is that I'm gonna let it go into the world. I'm gonna submit it to a museum. And there's a possibility that the ideas that you shared with me um, and, and uh, how this all comes together might be in a museum show at the De Young. So that's the, that's the hope, okay? So thank you for the, um, the city scene and the, uh, the owl here. Clearly we still need to do an ostrich and a uh, toucan and we're gonna get to that in just a moment. Um, I wanted to show you one other artist who has been really, really sticky for me. Somebody that I'm thinking about as I develop this series that you're helping me with. And uh, the other artist that has been really, really sticky is Dana Zed. So if you know Dana Zed from, um, from Clay Creation, um, you can pop that into the chat that maybe you've had a class with, with uh, Dana. Um, she has been making some incredible work lately. She is a very, uh, very well-respected, admired artist. Um, and uh, not just by me, but internationally. She's also uh, displayed her work and ha had a residency at the De Young. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find the images that she's been posting. She has been doing um, these really dreamy, uh, she's been doing these really dreamy, very, very uh, colorful um, art pieces lately. So you can see uh, there's her, uh, there's her profile and let's see some of the pieces that she's been posting. So she's been doing um, these, uh, these like really colorful uh, painted backgrounds and then these chalk lines over them. Um, she really likes birds too. <laughs> and uh, birds and fish. And uh, I am really, really excited and inspired by some of the color choices that she's making right now. And she did this really amazing piece uh, that is like living in my dreams right now. Uh, that is this like three headed wolf and a two headed eagle uh, at night. And so it's really, really sticky. And when you, when you find yourself thinking about something and thinking and thinking and thinking, um, when it really catches your imagination like that, uh, you know that there's something there that is worth following. So I am going to follow. I'm gonna follow that, that interest um, and you all are going to help me uh, add some chaos to this uh, by giving me some, um, some things that I have to include, okay? So you've given me some birds to include. I need something else to include. Nick gave me a skyline before, a city skyline. That's great, but I need something new. Um, Sophia said nighttime. I will include nighttime on one of them. I need some elements that I have not yet included that's not an animal. So it can't be a cat or a toucan or a penguin or an ostrich. I need yet another thing to add. Ooh, eyes is a good one. Great. So eyes is one. Give me a couple more. I'm gonna wait while the chat fills up with a few more ideas. A rose. Ooh, I like where you're going with that. Roses are excellent. Excellent topic. Puppies. Okay. 
Give me a couple more. Oh, sunshine. A cherry tree. Donuts. Ooh. Donuts. That's interesting. I wonder how I could do a donut in there. Okay, my brain is definitely riffing on donuts and eyes. And I don't know how to draw sunshine. I'm going to think about sunshine for a second. Um, one, two, seven, seven. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to draw a donut to start. And again, my process today is, uh, today I'm just doing the, the lines on, on this part. I'll add some color to one of the ones I did earlier in a moment. So let's do donut. See what pops up. It's like almost like the, like the Homer Simpson style donut is like what comes to mind. Um, oh, but that one's got a pretty angle. Okay, so I'm gonna look at this donut. I'm gonna do a blind contour of the donut. Um, I wish there were a way for you all to see this without me seeing my drawing. Maybe I can do it. Mm -mm -mm. Can you all see the donut? Okay, but then you can't see the drawing. Mm. Okay, well, you'll just have to see the drawing. And I'm gonna turn some music back on uh, so that you can draw as we're, as we're doing this. Um, a city floating on a cloud. Oh my goodness. Okay, definitely clouds. Okay, uh, that, the idea is coming, the idea is coming. I will keep chewing on that. Thank you, Lozen, I really appreciate that. So let's see. Got some music turning back on. Please keep drawing on your own. Um, you don't have to draw what I'm drawing. Just find something around you to draw. Um, I'm doing blind contour, but you don't have to. You can just keep each other company as we're drawing. In a few moments, we'll probably be joined by some other artists. Some people are coming in and coming out. And that's kind of, that's the beauty of YouTube is that people can come in and out and watch it later. It's very flexible. So if you're just joining, this is a great time to, to just listen to the music and grab a pen and just doodle. I am doing a blind contour of a donut and uh, a blind contour is where I'm, I'm looking at the picture of the donut, but I'm not looking at my piece of paper. And right now I'm drawing a lot of sprinkles. Ooh, my eyes starting to get confused with all these sprinkles. Okay, I think maybe I'm gonna switch over from doing this texture to doing an outline around the outside here. Okay, maybe I'll do more than one donut. This is like a really interesting texture. So whoever said sunshine, I'm thinking a lot about sunshine now and I'm thinking it would be cool to do like a solar um, flare, like, like the shapes and contours of that would be really interesting. So I think that's what I'm gonna look up next is a solar flare. I love looking down when I'm done and uh, and the surprise of it. <laughs> so blind contour is always fun that way. Um, so great, next up, uh, so I, I've got the donut here. I'm gonna look up a, uh, a solar flare um, for my sunshine contributor. And I think I'm gonna switch colors of pens. It feels important that the solar flare
that the solar flare is not in black. Um, but I'm not going to do an expected color. I'm not going to do red. I'm going to do purples. Okay, so now I'm going to look up solar flare. And see if I get a good image for solar flare. Ooh, there's some cool stuff there. Um, I know in third grade, oof. Uh, I know in third grade you all are studying the solar system. Look at that. That is so cool. Okay, so I think I want that to like really fill this whole space here and overlap with this. Um, this definitely is falling into that category of chaos. And I think when I add that here, that might be as much as I'm gonna do. Um, I don't know any if any birds or cats are gonna join in on this one, so let's see. Okay, so let's, um, you all can see that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it aside and Oof, this is so pretty. Okay, so, and I see it goes, there's like a beautiful curly cue up here. And I hope that you all are, are just sort of taking this as a starting place to make your own art. Um, because that's, that's really what being in an artist community is. You look at what other people are doing and you say, oh, I like that, but I'm gonna do it with this twist. I'm gonna take it and make it my own. Oh, I'm interested in this or I'm, I'm not interested in that and kind of see where your own motivations and your own ideas take you. And when you're stuck, when you have that fear of the blank canvas, when you don't know where to start, that's when it's a great time to look at art or talk to people. Oh, that's definitely chaos. <laughs> okay, so while I still have some of this here, um, I'm gonna use some of these, uh, I'm gonna use some of my crayons to show kind of differences in areas here before I forget where they are. And I can come back to them later. And while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about Dina Zed's work. I'm thinking about the vibrancy and the dreamlike quality of it. Because there's something about that work that just really gets me right in the gut. And, and so when you take an inspiration from another artist and then and then allow your your hand and your ideas to change it, to transform it, that's one way that you can really have a conversation through art. So I'm excited to, to share this with Dana and let her know that she's influenced me and let her know that I'm, I'm thinking about her while I'm making stuff and while I'm thinking about chaos. Okay. So this is my donuts and solar flare. <laughs> Okay, this is pretty fun. I'm excited to come back to this, but you know, I actually, I think this might need a bird. Um, so uh, I have not done uh, Lozen's idea of the, um, of the city on top of a cloud. I think I'm gonna do that next, Lozen. And, uh, but I do think that maybe this is the one that has the toucan. Um, let's see if this is the one to add the toucan. I'm gonna, uh, I'm going back up. Um, I'm gonna go back up and look at some of the other suggestions. So, next one is gonna be city floating on, uh, on a cloud. This one is sunshine and donut. And eyes, I forgot to put eyes. So it needs to have, ooh, let's do an eye and a toucan in this one. So I'm gonna start with the, maybe I'll just pick a toucan that has like a really, really cool eye. And Dorsalyn said it was an, an Amazon toucan. Owen, did you need it to be a different toucan? Uh, 
A one-eyed toucan. Yeah, I agree. Um, so let's see. Amazon toucan. Let's see how interesting their eyes are. Mm. Oh, that one's kind of interesting. This one looks, again, kind of grumpy. Oops. Back. I like the grumpy one. You see this grumpy one? I think I think I'm gonna do a grumpy toucan. Okay, let me see. I feel like maybe it needs to have. I'm kind of placing the toucan, figuring out where to go because this is really busy. It's got a lot of detail here, um, but I feel like the toucan could be here, and that could be pretty interesting. So. Um, a one-eyed toucan, and, and maybe a maybe a palm tree too. Okay, black. I'm gonna go black on this one, and I'm gonna start the eye here. And here it is. Oh, is there a second kind of toucan I should do, by the way? Because I think maybe this, I like the idea of having more than one head on here. There's a Tlingit rattle that does more than one head. Oof. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Um, Okay, let's see, is there a different kind of toucan? I'm gonna do a second one. Oh, a turtle, cherry tree, penguin. Exotic toucan, is an uh, exotic toucan different? Mm -hmm. That looks the same to me. Oh, but what's that? This one's interesting. It's got a big bill. Okay. I like that one. I'm gonna try. Ooh, this one's got uh, like it's got like a seed in its mouth. I'm gonna do that, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna start the eye over here. Okay, so next one is gonna be the city in the sky, and. I think I'm getting into the busy zone. I can just, I just felt my pen go over the, oh yeah, <laughs> felt my pen go over the uh, crayon. All right, so I think I'm gonna call this one done for now, but I'm gonna go back into some of the colors later. Um, I'm gonna do one more of the, um, the city, uh, the city in, uh, the sky, but I'm not gonna do this blind contour this time. I think I'm just going to, um, I think I'm going to do, uh, without looking at it. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I, I'm trying to do it so that I'm releasing control, but I want it to be from my head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw down here, but I'm gonna look at the screen. I'm gonna look up here. So I'm not gonna look down here. And I'm gonna try to draw backwards. That way I don't have any control over it. Um, and I'm gonna start with the cloud. And then I'm gonna, for my city, I'm gonna try to remember some of the details of the cityscape that I did earlier.
I can't see anything that I'm drawing right now, which is kind of great. Yeah. It's a real blind drawing. And then maybe I'll put, I'll put, uh, uh, I feel like it would be cool to have the bridge, uh, like the Golden Gate Bridge here. So I'm gonna start here. Maybe this feels more like the Marin side or something. Okay. And ostrich. This needs an ostrich. Okay, so this is a city on a cloud and it needs an ostrich going all the way back. Um, so I'm gonna look up ostrich. Oh, you know what? In the comments, you guys gotta tell me if it's ostrich or penguin that I need to add to this. Vote ostrich or penguin. Sophia says Cardinal. I'm waiting to hear if it is Ostrich or Cardin or Ostrich or Penguin for R2. I see Penguin, Ostrich, one for each. <laughs> you guys gotta give me a little bit more direction. <laughs> Unless I hear lots of Penguin, I'm gonna put Ostrich on here. We're still 50-50. Oh my goodness. Oh, tip of the scales. Oh, now people are just, oh, magpie. <laughs> now people are just repeating themselves. Um, but let's see, I think I'm gonna, I am gonna do penguin. I'm gonna do one, a really fluffy penguin. Um, no, not ostrich food. Uh, penguin. Oh. <laughs> Okay, um, having issues with this iPad. Okay, uh, penguin, feathery. <laughs> I don't know if that'll give us better images. Oh yeah, is it the emperor penguin that has the fluffy faces? I love fluffy faced penguins. Oh, rock hopper penguin. Okay, so rock hopper penguin. Ooh, there are some crazy looking rock hopper penguins. <laughs> Oh, that one is the winner. Look at this guy. Look at that hairdo. That hairdo is just the best. Okay, so all the fluffers. Okay, so um, we're gonna do rock hopper, rock hopper penguin, and our rock hopper penguin is gonna be, I'm like feeling the vibe, feeling the vibe, and I feel like the best rock hopper, I'm gonna put the rock hopper penguin like big, like right across here, right across the center, sort of si sideways, like a head tilt maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go really, really big. Another blind contour. And while I'm doing this, I want you to think about um, if there is any art, if there are any drawings that have really uh, inspired you today that you maybe like to add to Padlet, anything that you've done where you're just like, yeah, I dig it and I'd like to share it. And I haven't done this week's highlight reel yet. And 
and I would love to see what you've been making. Lozen, I'd love to see what your brother has been making too. Certainly miss having Ryu in class. All the fluffers. interested in that. That's pretty fun. Okay, so all the penguins and um, okay, so now I'm going to go back to uh, in the last few minutes here. Uh, there are two things that I want to look at. The first thing is I want to go back to the drawing from earlier um, with uh, Nick gave me the city, uh, this, the New York. I think the ostrich is going to end up here, Biggie and ostrich fans. I'm not going to draw it right now, um, but I am going to, I am going to put an ostrich on here. Um, and then here's the one that happened earlier with, uh, with Sophia gave the owl and the nighttime vibe. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to channel a little bit of, uh, of color work from, um, from Dana, from Dana Z. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I noticed in some of her work that there was like some texture, um, and she was doing it sort of in terms of, uh, she was doing it like, like waves, but I kind of, I, I want to take that and uh, I think I want to do like a watercolor crayon resist. And um, and there's something fun about the vibe of, of crayon. So I'm gonna bring that nighttime sky thing in here. And something I notice is that quite a lot, there's a, there's a, there's like some, atmosphere with uh, with the clouds in Oakland. So like the clouds kind of look almost orangey. So I'm gonna take that inspiration for some moon cloud shenanigans here. Maybe a little bit of white. I know I'm going to go over this with the um, watercolor, so I can I can keep some of the white of the page. And uh, oh, and you know what? We had that concept of the eye earlier. I wonder if the eye could come in with. Uh, I'm going to do a blind contour with with uh, crayon. I'm gonna add some of that here. So I'm not gonna work on this for too much longer because I wanna show you one other thing. So. Let's see, I'm gonna look at someone's eye here and do another blind contour. Now crayon is an interesting material for blind contour because I have to keep the pressure on so it can make the lines kind of more jagged. Less controlled. It can make it harder to do a blind contour. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I dig that. And I like the repetition of the moon and the eyes and then this human eye. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, I don't really know what's gonna happen down here, but maybe we'll 
will continue that um, sort of line thing. And, and I'm, I'm gonna have to develop this. Oops, this feels like uh, my table's got some texture. It's messing up the, the crayon. Oops. There we go. So earlier, Nick said uh, blending was, was nice. Now, one of the keys with blending crayon is really building up a really waxy surface. So, and, uh, and to go back and forth between darker crayon and kind of the, the um, you know, go back and forth between a lighter color and a darker color. Uh, and I like to use the lighter color for, um, uh, I like to use the lighter color for blending. And somebody's asking for magic eye, but I don't entirely know how to do a magic eye. I don't know what, entirely what you want on there. So it'll be a little bit hard for me. Okay. Um, so this whole process, I think my next step is going to be uh, water and some crayon and experiment with that. And uh, you can see um, with this piece that I did, uh, oh, oh, there we go. You can see this piece that I did yesterday, um, that this is kind of where some of my inspiration is sitting. It's like these bright colors and the crazy lines um, and then kind of watercoloring uh, and letting go of, of control to see just what happens. Okay, so that's probably where I'm headed with this next. I'll post some pictures of finished ones um, when I'm done here. Um, and uh, again, all of that is gonna be on Padlet. So the last thing I wanted to show you is to invite you all to experiment with making some quarantine monsters. So a quarantine monster is, uh, is based on a surrealist game uh, that's called Exquisite Corpse, okay? And I know that's a weird name, um, but Exquisite Corpse is a, a game from the 1920s, surrealist artists. And what they would do is they would get together and they'd take a blank piece of paper and they'd fold it into fourths. So what I want you to do right now is go grab a blank white piece of paper that's not in a sketchbook. Okay, so see if you can scrounge one of those up. And I'm gonna scrounge one up myself. And uh, so I've got, I've got a piece here. Now I don't actually have regular, um, the regular paper mine's cardstock, but you can use any blank white paper. And I'm going to take some of your ideas that you still have in there and I'm going to use them for my quarantine monster. So that stack of pancakes is still going to happen. Okay. That, uh, that magic eye still going to happen. Pig. I'm excited to add a pig here. Some pig aspects. So you take your piece of paper and you fold it like you're making a card. And then you're gonna fold it again, but instead of making it still like a card, you're gonna make it like hot dog style. You're gonna fold it one more time here. Okay. And again, we're making something like this. So now you're going to, you have four sections. And the top section is going to be a head of any sort. Now you get to decide how many eyes there are. You get to decide if it's more humanoid or if it is more animal or whatever you like. And then you fold that back and then you, and then you make the shoulders and the arms. And then you fold that back and you make the legs. And then you fold that back and you make the feet. Now you can do this with other people in your household if you have more people that want to make art together or as I did with this one, you can make the whole thing. Just imagine that each section is a different animal. Um, so, you know, I was thinking about some humanoid monster with an extra eye and horns. And then I was thinking about a bird 
And then I was thinking about an insect um, with multiple legs, although there aren't any insects that only have five legs. So it's a little awkward. And then uh, for the feet, I decided to make, uh, instead of left feet, five right feet. So maybe this is a really good dancer. I don't know. Okay. So that's kind of the concept there. Um, I'm going to start. And I'm going to start by uh, drawing my head. Tell me how many eyes does my head have? Tell me in the chat. Mm. Five, five eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna do a pig with five eyes. Okay, so when I think about a pig, I'm gonna start with the snout. by the hairs on his chinny chin chin okay so i've got uh Okay, so somebody has anticipated how many arms am I gonna have? Uh, and, oh my goodness, Serena says 12. Um, so already we have, uh, Sonia said, I think that's Sonia, said five, five eyes um, and maybe three arms. Serena says 12 arms. I think I'm gonna go with Serena, so, uh, after you do the head, you bring the neck down. And now I'm gonna think of a different animal. So what kind of animal arms should these be? I did a bird over here for this one. What animal am I channeling for the second part here? A lot of times that's a fun place to start. It could be a human. I could have human, 12 human arms. Um, give me a suggestion in the chat. Dog arms, okay, here we go. These are not gonna be super realistic dog arms, but there's 12 of them, so maybe that is a good thing. All right, for those of you that are headed on to other classes and other things, please remember to post on Padlet. And for those of you that wanna hang out to finish this monster, you totally can. Um, remember that your, uh, your Padlet is posted on Constella um, with the password that is also on your Google Classroom. Feel free to email it to me at elizabeth with an s donley at ousd.org one two three four five six oh my gosh i'm only halfway there okay now i want you to think about as you're drawing yours add texture so i'm going to come back in and add texture for these I'm just getting the overall thing here. 
Oh, I don't know if all the arms are gonna fit. Oh, I'm not supposed to go into the head area. I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay. That is a lot of arms. Holy guacamole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We did it. Okay. I'm gonna say we're gonna go really, really simple for the legs. I'm gonna say one leg. Because we are running out of time. And it's gonna be snake scales. Okay, and then feet. It's gonna have a big human foot on the end with one really big toe. All right, so that is my quarantine monster. Um, how do you get to Padlet? Uh, I will, it is in your Google Classroom. Um, it is posted on uh, on Google Classroom, there's a list, there's a link for each age band. So there's a K2 Padlet, there's a 3-5 Padlet, and there's a middle school Padlet. And uh, there is a password that is posted on Constella. I'm not gonna put, post it on here since we're public right now. Um, but if you post on there, that's one of the ways that you can share with me. And again, you can also email it to me, elizabeth.donley at OUSD.org. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. It's been really fun getting a chance to do uh, some chaos drawings with you and also getting a chance to do our monsters. I'd love to see your monsters on Padlet. I'd love to see them shared on Padlet. So Sophia, please post on Padlet um, so that we can see your cool pieces. And um, Thank you so much for joining today. Bye, everybody. I'll see you. Uh, I'll do this again next Tuesday at 1 p.m.